I welcome you all to this session and here we shall discuss about Europe. For your convenience, this session is divided into five major points which are physical geography, landforms and aerial features, climate, mountains and rivers and major attractions. Firstly, we will look into the physical geography of Europe. Europe is the second smallest continent. It extends from the island nation of Iceland in the west to the Ural Mountains of Russia in the east. Europe's northernmost point is the Salvard Archipelago of Norway and it reaches as far south as the islands of Greece and Malta. It is sometimes described as a peninsula of peninsulas. A peninsula is a piece of land surrounded by water on three sides. Europe is a peninsula of the Eurasian supercontinent and is bordered by the Arctic Ocean to the north, the Atlantic Ocean to the west, the Mediterranean, Black and Caspian Seas to the south. Europe's main peninsulas are the Iberian, Italian and Balkan located in southern Europe and the Scandinavian and Jetland located in northern Europe. The link between these peninsulas has made Europe a dominant economic, social and cultural force throughout recorded history. Europe can be divided into four major physical regions running from north to south that is western uplands, north European plain, central uplands and alpine mountains. Western uplands, western uplands also known as the northern highlands curve up the western edge of Europe and define the physical landscape of Scandinavia that is Norway, Sweden and Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Scotland, Ireland, the Brittany region of France, Spain and Portugal. The western uplands is defined by hard ancient rock that was shaped by glaciation. Glaciation is the process of land being transformed by glaciers or ice sheets. As glaciers receded from the area, they left a number of distant physical features including abundant marshlands, lakes and jords. A jord is a long and narrow inlet of the sea that is surrounded by high rugged cliffs. Many of Europe's jords are located in Iceland and Scandinavia. North European Plain The North European Plain extends from the southern United Kingdom east to Russia. It includes parts of France, Belgium, the Netherlands, Germany, Denmark, Poland, the Baltic states and Belarus. Most of the great European plain lies between 152 meters in elevation. It is home to many navigable rivers including the Rhine, Weser, Elbe, Oder and Vistula. The climate supports a wide variety of seasonal crops. These physical features allowed for early communication, travel and agricultural development. The Northern European Plain remains the most densely populated region of Europe. Central Uplands The Central Uplands extend east-west across Central Europe and include Western France and Belgium, 
southern Germany, the Czech Republic and parts of northern Switzerland and Austria. The central uplands are lower in altitude and less rugged than the alpine region and are heavily wooded. Important highlands in this region include the massive Central and the Vosges in France, the Ardennes of Belgium, the Black Forest and the Taunus in Germany and the Or and the Sudeten in the Czech Republic. This region is sparsely populated except in the Rhine, Rhone, Elbe and Danube river valleys. Moving on to Alpine Mountains. The Alpine Mountains include the ranges in the Italian and Balkan peninsulas, northern Spain and southern France. This region includes the mountains of the Alps, Pyrenees, Apennines, Dinaric Alps, Balkans and Carpathians. High elevations, rugged plateaus and steeply sloping land define this region. Europe's highest peak, Mount Elbrus, is in the Caucasus Mountains of Russia. The Alpine region also includes active volcanoes such as Mount Etna and Mount Vesuvius in Italy. Moving on to flora and fauna. Much like its physical regions, Europe's plant and animal communities follow a general north-south orientation. The tundra founded in Iceland and the northern reaches of Scandinavia and Russia is a treeless region where small mosses, lichens and ferns grow. Huge herds of reindeer feed on these tiny plants. The taiga, which stretches across the northern Europe just south of the tundra, is composed of coniferous forest with trees such as pine, spruce and fir. Animals such as moose, bear, elk are native to the European taiga. Just south of the taiga is a mixture of coniferous and deciduous trees including beech, ash, poplar and willow. Although this area remains heavily forested, the continent's forests were drastically reduced as a result of intense urbanization throughout human history. Intense trade introduced many species which often overtook native plants. The forest and grasslands of Western and Central Europe have been almost completely domesticated with crops and livestock dominant. Finally, a small drought resistant plants border the Mediterranean Sea, Europe's southern edge. Trees also grow in that southernmost region including the Aleppo pine, cypress and cork oak. The only primate native to Europe, the Barbary macaco inhabits this Mediterranean basin. A small troop of Barbary macacos lives on the tiny island of Gibraltar between Spain and the African country of Morocco. The waters surrounding Europe are home to a number of organisms including fish, seaweeds and the marine mammals. The cold water surrounding northern Britain and Scandinavia is home to unique species of cold water corals. All of the major water bodies in Europe have been fished for centuries. In many places, including the Mediterranean and North Seas, waters have been overfished and due to which about a quarter of marine mammals are under threat. 
Let's now move on to the Great European Plain. The Great European Plain or the European Plain is a plain in Europe and is a major feature of one of the four major topographical units of Europe that is the central and interior lowlands. It is the largest mountain free landform in Europe although a number of highlands are identified within. The plain stretches from the Pyrenees mountains and the French coast of the Bay of Biscay in the west to the Russian Ural Mountains in the east. Its shores are washed to the west and northwest by waters of Atlantic Basin, to the northwest the Arctic Basin and to the southeast the Mediterranean Basin. To the south of the Middle European Plain stretches the central uplands and plateaus of Europe elevating to the peaks of the Alps and the Carpathian Mountains. To the northwest across the English Channel lie the British Isles while across several straits north of the Jutland Peninsula lies the Scandinavian Peninsula which is part of the Fenoxcandia ecoregion. Most of the plain lies in the temperate broadleaf and mixed forest biome while its far eastern portion extends into steppe of the ecoregion Eurasia steppe. The great European plain is divided into the North European plain and the East European plain. The subdivision is a historical one rather than geomorphological. The Russian portion of East European plain is also known as the Russian plain which covers almost entirely the Russian portion of the Russian Federation. In Western Europe the plain is relatively narrow in the northern part of Europe but it broadens significantly towards its eastern part in western Russia. Overall, much of Europe enjoys a relatively mild climate, at least when compared with other locations throughout the world lying at the same latitude. This is primarily due to the Atlantic Ocean's warm Gulf Stream current which exerts a moderating effect on a significant portion of the continent, particularly its westernmost half. Additionally, the continent's landforms including mountain ranges such as the Alps and Pyrenees alter the climates of certain areas. Europe's climates and corresponding weather can be roughly divided into six categories based on geography. Let's see now Western Europe. All of the British Isles and the Low Countries, Northern Spain, most of France and the westernmost half of Germany fall under the marine west coast climate classification. It features both mild summers and winters with temperatures rarely becoming either uncomfortably hot or cold. Other features of Western European weather include high humidity and precipitation usually in the form of rain as well as considerable cloudiness. Mediterranean, Portugal, Southern Spain and France, Italy, Greece and South Slavic nations bordering the Adriatic Sea enjoy the warm sunny Mediterranean climate. Also found on the Southern California coast, this highly desirable climate type features mild to warm winters, hot summers and a pleasant spring and autumn. Frequent sunshine 
particularly in summer time makes the region a prime vacation destination. Spain The interior portion of the Iberian Peninsula experiences a semi-arid steppy climate. Weather patterns here are similar to those found in the Mediterranean zone, albeit slightly drier and cooler. The same climate type exists in the Great Plains of the Western US, although thunderstorms in Spain generally lack the ferocity of those in the plain states. Central and Eastern Europe The climate of most of Central and Eastern Europe, including Southern Scandinavia, is categorized as cool summer humid continental. As in the Western Europe, summers are mild but winters are significantly colder with snowfall a common occurrence. Northern Europe, the central and northern portions of Norway, Sweden, Finland and Russia possess a subarctic climate like that of western Alaska. Long harsh, bitterly cold winters bring frequent snowstorms. Summers, although short and cool, feature the rare spectacle of seemingly unending daylight, with the sun hovering just above the horizon throughout the night in some locales. The continent of Europe is home to some of the most famous mountains in the world, loved by both tourists and mountaineers. Pyrenees and Alps are the most famous mountain regions in Europe, famous for their beauty and resorts. They also have a lot to offer for mountain climbers. The Alps are the highest and most extensive mountain range system that lies entirely in Europe, stretching approximately 1,200 kilometers across eight alpine countries, that is Austria, France, Germany, Italy, Liechtenstein, Monaco, Slovenia and Switzerland. The Caucasus mountains are higher and the Urals longer, but both lie partly in Asia. Mont Blanc spans the French-Italian border and at 4810 meters is the highest mountain in the Alps. The Pyrenees is a range of mountains in the southwest of Europe that forms a natural border between France and Spain. It separates the Iberian Peninsula from the rest of continental Europe and extends for about 491 km from the Bay of Biscay to the Mediterranean Sea. Mont Blanc rises about 15,771 feet above the sea level. It is the highest mountain in Western Europe. The mountain lies in Alps on French-Italian border. In French, it is called the White Lady. This mountain is famous for snowboarding, skiing and mountaineering and hiking. Mount Elbrus. It is located in Caucasus mountain range of Europe. This mount is located in Russia on border of Europe and Asia. It is a volcano with twin cones. Scientists classify this volcano to the inactive, but still from the eastern slope, some sulfurous gases still emit. It is about 18,510 feet high. In Caucasus range, Elbrus is main center of mountaineering. Going ahead with rivers. 
The rivers of Europe have served as boundaries, avenues of transportation and commerce and sources of sustenance. Some of the rivers which we are going to see today are Danube. The Danube is Europe's second longest river after the Volga River and also the longest river in the European Union region. It is located in Central and Eastern Europe. Today flows through 10 countries. Originating in Germany, the Danube passing through or touching the border of Austria, Slovakia, Hungary, Croatia, Serbia, Romania, Bulgaria, Moldova and Ukraine before emptying into the Black Sea. Volga The Volga is the longest river in Europe. It is also Europe's largest river in terms of discharge and watershed. It flows through the Central Russia and into the Caspian Sea and is widely viewed as a national river of Russia. Rhine the Rhine River originates in Switzerland and flows 776 miles to the North Sea in the Netherlands. Along the way, it passes through Switzerland, Austria, Germany, France and the Netherlands. The Rhine is a major waterway for both commerce and tourism with many companies offering Rhine River cruises. Once very populated, the Rhine has been restored today and is now a source of drinking water. Elbe The Elbe River once comprised part of the border between East and West Germany. Today, the Elbe flows through Germany and the Czech Republic. The Elbe has long been an important avenue for commerce linking major cities including Dresden, Prague and Berlin. Barges still carry cargo along the Elbe and many dams along the river help with flood control. We will start with London. London England's capital set on the river Thames is a 21st century city with history stretching back to the Roman times. As its centre stand the embossing houses of parliament, the iconic Big Ben clock tower and Westminster Abbey site of British monarch coronations. Across the Thames, the London Eye observation wheel provides panoramic views of the South Bank cultural complex and the entire city. Rome Rome, Italy's capital, is a sprawling cosmopolitan city with nearly 3,000 years of globally influential art, architecture and culture on display. Ancient ruins such as the Roman Forum and the Colosseum evoke the power of the former Roman Empire. Vatican City headquarters of the Roman Catholic Church boast St. Peter's Basilica and the Vatican Museums which house masterpieces such as Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel frescoes. Paris Paris, France capital is a major European city and a global centre for art, fashion, gastronomy and culture. Its picturesque 19th century cityscape is crisscrossed by wide boulevards and the river scene. Beyond such landmarks as the Eiffel Tower and the 12th century Gothic Notre Dame Cathedral, the city is known for its cafe culture and designer boutiques. Barcelona Barcelona, the cosmopolitan capital of Spain's 
Catalonia region is defined by Kyrki art and architecture, imaginative food and vibrant street life. It has medieval roots seen in the maze like Gothi quarter, but a modernist personality represented by architect Antoni Godis, fantastical Sagrada Familia Church. Amsterdam. Amsterdam is the Netherlands capital known for its artistic heritage, elaborate canal system and narrow houses with cable facades, legacies of the city's 17th century golden age. Its museum district houses works by Remdent and Vermeer at the Ritz Museum, the Van Gogh Museum and modern art at the Stedelijk Cycling is key to the city's character and there are 400 kilometer of cycle paths. Prague. Prague, the capital of Czech Republic, is bisected by the Volta River, nicknamed the city of 100 spires. It's known for its old town square, the heart of its historic core with colorful baroque buildings, gothic churches, and the medieval astronomical clock with a popular show. Completed in 1402, pedestrian Charles Bridge is lined with 30 statues of saints. Berlin Berlin, Germany's capital and cultural center, dates to the 13th century. Divided during the Cold War, today it is known for its art scene nightlife and modern architecture. Reminders of the city's turbulent 20th century history include its Holocaust memorial and the Berlin Wall's gratified remains. Its 18th century Brandenburg Gate has become an iconic symbol of reunification. Vienna. Vienna, the capital of Austria, lies in the country's east on the Danube River. Its artistic and intellectual legacy was shaped by residents including Mozart, Beethoven and Sigmund Freud. The city is also known for its imperial palaces including Schönbrunn, the Habsburgs, summer residence. Tuscany. Italy's Tuscany region is packed with some of the world's most recognizable Renaissance era art and architecture, including Michelangelo's David, the works in the Uffizi Gallery and the Dumovo Basilica of Florence. To conclude, we can say that as a continent with hugely diverse topography, the geographical facts about Europe are an interesting collection. Each country could easily make a contribution with an interesting fact as the landscape changes so dramatically across small spaces unlike other continents. Thank you.